For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend Irma. My name is Jane Stacy, and I live in New York, a city that's often referred to as the melting pot of the world. You will hear many strange tongues, Chinese, Italian, French, Norwegian, and many others. And unless you're a linguist, nothing they say makes any sense. Which reminds me of my roommate, Irma Peterson. She also speaks a strange tongue. Now, don't get me wrong. She speaks English, but nothing she says ever makes any sense. Think I'm a a little rough on the girl? Well, how would you like to be with her in a restaurant and have Irma say to the waiter, What do you mean, do I want my halibut grilled? You know you can't get a confession from a dead fish. (laughs) See what I mean? No wonder I rush home from work as soon as I can, because when I open that door, it's like opening a grab bag. I never know what's going to pop out. No, Jane's not home yet. This is Irma. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Burton. What? Oh, you want to thank Jane for sending the flowers to your little girl, Patricia. Oh, it wasn't measles. She just got mad at the electric fan and hit it with a bottle of ketchup. (laughs) All right, I'll tell her. Come in. Hi, you chicken. (laughs) Hello, Al, honey. Al, you look worried. What's wrong? Ain't been myself lately, chicken. I noticed the change. Noticed the change in you yesterday, Al, when you helped me with my coat in the restaurant. I lately don't know what I'm doing, chicken. Feel the time has come to blow this bird. What do you mean, Al? Chicken, I'm going out west. Out west? Uh Uh-huh. To Nebraska. (laughs) Happen to have an aunt who lives on a ranch. I've never seen her. Well, then why do you have to go way out there to visit her? Well, it's the right thing to do. You see, my aunt's getting very old, and she has some money. And I got a feeling she misses me. (laughs) You can't go that far away from me. Nebraska, gee, I'll miss you too much, and besides, you're you're liable to fall in love with one of those Eskimos. (laughs) Chicken, I said Nebraska, not Alaska. Nebraska is cow country. What's the difference? I don't trust you with anyone. (laughs) Besides, if you loved me, you'd never treat me this way, leaving me all alone. Aw, chicken, I love you, but this town has me in a rut. I ain't getting anywhere. There's so much red tape. Take the unemployment office. They won't even let me use their telephone to place my bets at the racetrack. (laughs) And then take my deals. Never have no luck with them Because people in this town Don't have no imagination It's the same old story I'm years ahead of my time And the world Ain't ready for me yet So what, Al? I love you And if the world isn't ready for you We can live some other place Ah, them's sweet sentiments, chicken And I love you for it But the West calls me And in the words of Cassidy I must hop along Will you come back? Depends on the reception I get from my aunt. We come from a stubborn family, and she may go on living indefinitely. (laughs) But if things go right, we'll send for you, and we will walk around our ranch hand in hand. Oh, I know, and it sounds so wonderful, Al. You and I will be two ranch hands. (laughs) (laughs) What if something goes wrong and I never hear from you again? Oh, them is the sacrifices pioneers make when they go west chicken. Remember, it ain't going to be easy for a guy like me who has always lived in a city. I don't know nothing about roping them corrals <laughs> and hitching them posts and branding them wheels. 
Well, I'm not going to let you go, Al. You can't do this to me. I'll be miserable without you. That's understandable, chicken. <laughs> and I'd like to stay here because you deserve the best. But you see, here I'm like a little fish in a big pond. Out there is the great open desert. I got room to swim around. <laughs> Let's be brave about this thing, chicken. All right, Al. If that's the way you want me to be. That's the spirit, chicken. Here's to the future and what it may bring. Sure say, la femme. At a girl. <laughs> and now, as they say out west, I'll be hankering down to the pool room to say goodbye to my friends. We'll see you after I pack. So long, partner. You're crying. Al is going west. Alcatraz? <laughs> no, it's some other state. Nebraska, I think he said. <laughs> he has an aunt out there, and he says he may live with her on a ranch. Wait a minute. I, I don't get this. How come he wants to leave New York? Well, he says there's no opportunity for him here. Well, I admit we have the finest police force in the world, but he could make an honest living. Well, he says he can't find any work here that appeals oh, to him. Irma, I have no patience with a man like that. Take Richard. As well off as he is, he always finds time for some little side issue that not only affords him pleasure, but often brings in extra income. R right now, he's experimenting with flowers. He's perfected an orchid, which he's entering in the flower show tonight, and he's naming it in honor of his mother, the Helen Rhinelander Orchid. You know, Jane, I've never seen an orchid. Well, going around with Al, you're lucky if you ever saw a sandwich. <laughs> but I'm just trying to show you what a man with ambition can do. Well, do you think that's a thing for Al? Well, I don't know. It's just a thought. But modern horticulture is wide open to you. There's, there's big money in it. Why, they've already developed a marigold with no odor. And they've developed a lettuce that looks just like a flower. And they've got thornless berries. Oh, there are so many things in the world just waiting for men with... Ideas and ambition. I guess so, Jean. I, I guess it's all my fault that Al hasn't gotten him, gotten anywhere. Your fault? Yes, because I read that a man is only as good as the woman behind him. Now, now take Napoleon. While he was out fighting, his wife ran the store so he could sell all that brandy. <laughs> then, uh, uh, take, uh, take George Washington. Did he open those candy stores? No, his wife Martha did. <laughs> It's my duty to find a job for Al. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little palm trees. One with dates on top, the other with a coconut on top. <laughs> Excuse me, a little joke I picked up that I should have left lay there. <laughs> well, I'd like to laugh, Professor, but I'm not in the mood. Oh, I notice you've been crying, Irma. What's the trouble? Al is going west. Oh, now, this I don't think is fair. Out there, they already had storms and blizzards. I don't think they deserve one disaster after another. <laughs> <laughs> you must be fooling me, Irma. No, Professor, no. It, it seems to be on the level. And Irma is heartbroken. I thought if I could find him a job, maybe he would change his mind. Do you know of anything, Professor? Well, I can speak to my boss at the Gypsy Tea Room. There is a job open that he might give to Al. Of course, it's kind of dangerous. What do you mean, dangerous? He would have to test the food. And this I wouldn't recommend even to Al. <laughs> well, uh, maybe Mrs. O'Reilly knows of something. Uh, well, if you're going to talk to Mrs. O'Reilly, I would rather not be here. Well, why not? <laughs> She's a little angry at me because I told her I knew a place where she could pick up a little extra money modeling. Well, what's wrong with that? No. I don't know, but when I told her what they wanted her to model for, she became a little sensitive. Well, what was it for? For Bach beard. They want a picture of a goat's head. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you that, Irma, to cheer you up. Oh, nothing will cheer me up, Professor. It's my duty to get Al a job. Oh, Irma, that's ridiculous. It's not your duty. Besides, it won't hurt anything to let him go out west. Oh, you're wrong, Jane. I've got to try everything in my power to keep him here. Because once he gets out west, he'll forget about me as he sits under the moon and listens to those howling cuties. Irma, those are coyotes. <laughs> What's the difference? Competition is competition. 
I know only one thing. Al is my man and I'm his woman, and I think it's too nice an arrangement to break up. <laughs> Herma, where are you going? To the pool room. I want to talk to Al. Well, be careful, sweetie. The last time you went there, you were hit on the head with a cue ball. Oh, that's all right, Jane. It didn't count against Al's score. <laughs> It's a wonderful girl, isn't she, Jamie? Oh, they don't come any truer. Maybe smarter, but no truer. <laughs> to think she got to such extremes for a guy like Al. Oh, it seems like the right people always attract the wrong people. Oh, how well I know it. I remember when I was married to my Sonia. It was like being in the cleaning and dyeing business. <laughs> At night, she was cleaning up my pockets, and in the morning when I looked on her, I felt like dying. <laughs> And for 20 years after that, I vowed I would never become friendly with another woman. What about Mrs. O'Reilly? Well, you see, I kept my vow. No one could believe that's a woman. <laughs> so, Jenny, if I hear of a job for Al, I'll get in touch with you. Oh, well, where will you be? In my room. This is nesting time, and I want to make sure that the birds don't carry out any of my furniture. <laughs> Where are those want ads? There must be something Al can do. Oh, here they are. Wanted young man to work... Uh, no, that won't do. Young man with character, ambition, and honesty. Oh, brother, now I'm really getting cold. Come in. Hello, Jane. Well, Richard, I didn't expect you. I know you didn't expect me, Jane, but I've just dropped by to ask a favor. Well, certainly, Richard. What is it? They're not taking the entries for the flower show for two more hours, and I'm afraid my prize orchid may wilt. So I thought I might leave it in your refrigerator uh, until later. Understand? Why, of course, Richard. Is that the new green variety you were telling me about? Yes, I had my gardener select this one. Richard, does your mother know about this? No, no, it's going to be a surprise. Oh, what a thrill it'll be for your mother, the Helen Rhinelander Orchid. <laughs> Thank you. And Richard, while we're speaking about flowers, um, how about the uh, Jane Stacy forget-me-not? Oh, I'm working on that, Jane. All right, Richard. I'll put the box with the orchid right in the refrigerator. It'll be safe there. How do you know? Because you have fragile marked on the box. And I'm sure Irma will think that that says poison. Pepsodent toothpaste, one bite, film on teeth, and cleans breath too. Pepsodent toothpaste, one gives film on teeth, the old skidoo. Here's good news, big money-saving news about the wonderful new film-removing Pepsodent, an amazingly improved film-fighting formula for brightening teeth and cleaning breath. And you can get it now at a sensational introductory bargain. Listen. Right now, you can get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. Yes, two 25-cent tubes in a special twin pack, regular price 50 cents, now only 33 cents. You save 17 cents. Yes, penny for penny, ounce for ounce, new Pepsodent gives you more for your money than any other leading toothpaste. And more in results, too. For no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's new film-removing formula. It foams wonderfully, goes to work faster removing film, makes your teeth brighter and your breath cleaner. So act now. In this day of high prices, don't miss this amazing bargain. Get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. More for your money than any other leading toothpaste today. Cheer up, sister, and you too, mister. Pepsodent. Pepsodent. The paste for you. Irma and go west. Personally, I think if Al went west, everything would come east. Not that I consider Al an undesirable character. I'll just put it this way. One look at him and Cripple Creek would regain its health and grab the first train, Dry Gulch would fall off the wagon, and Death Valley would turn over in its grave. <laughs> 
But since Irma says she'll die if he leaves her, I talked to Richard, and he said he'll try to get Al a job. And if he does get one for him, we'll still have a problem. We'll have to chloroform Al every morning to take him to work. Hello. Hello, Jane. Oh, hello, honey. What are you doing? Where are you? I'm with Al. I'm trying to find a job for him. Any luck, sweetie? No, and I've tried all over. I almost got him a job as a guard in the bank, but the man said they'd have to have a, a guard to guard Al. Well, honey, Richard said he's going to see what he can do. Oh, that's so sweet, and we'll keep trying, too. Oh, uh, and Jane... Yes, honey? I forgot to feed the canary, but there's a package of seeds on the dresser. Irma, I've seen that package, and I've got news for you. Blue Jay is not bird seed, it's corn plasters. <laughs> it is? Well, so it won't be a total loss, drop some in his cage, maybe his feet hurt him. <laughs> All right, Irma, get home as soon as you can. Goodbye. Come in. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Hi, Professor. Hello, Janie. The professor here tells me that Al is going out west. Yes, unless we get him a job. Well, my brother has a Hudson agency, and maybe Al would fit in there. Why, that sounds perfect, because the Hudson is the car you step down into, and there's no one any lower than Al. <laughs> but Irma loves him, Janie. How are you and Richard getting along? Well, I haven't seen much of him because he's been busy. You see, Richard has developed a new orchid, and he's entering it in the flower show. I have it in the refrigerator now. He's going to name it in honor of his mother, the Helen Rhinelander Orchid. What a coincidence. Several years ago, I used to go with a gardener, and he named a flower after me. Oh, I would love to see the Mrs. O'Reilly cactus bush. <laughs> Well, for your information, it wasn't a cactus bush at all. It was a very interesting plant. It was a cross between a snapdragon and a pussy willow. <laughs> he called it the Mrs. O'Reilly Snap Puss. <laughs> well, this isn't getting us anywhere. I wonder if Irma had better luck getting Al a job. It's no use, chicken. We've interviewed so many guys, and none of them will meet my term. Well, Al, you can't expect them to pay you if you don't work. <laughs> Besides, Jane says Richard may have something for you. Ah, uh, that guy. He always promises things. No, chicken, it's no use. Guess I might as well go ahead and buy my western outfit. A sombrero, a lassie, and maybe a pair of muchachas to go with my jodspur. <laughs> talk that way. You wouldn't be so determined to leave me if you loved me. Oh, chicken, don't cry. You know I love you. It's just that... Well, why can't we keep on trying, Al? My boss, Mr. Clyde, lives right up the street. Maybe he can find something for you. Well, I'll try. If you'll just promise to stop that crying. What are you going to say to him? Well, I'll just tell him you're looking for a business opportunity so we can get married and I can quit my job. <laughs> Oh, no, chicken. Don't like to have you make them sacrifices for me. <laughs> Besides, we got to impress Mr. Clyde with my importance so he will have confidence in me. Well, all right, Al. What shall I say? Well, just say uh, uh, you have never known a man with such character. And if he will be on the lookout for a good business and give us the lowdown on it, we will never forget it. You got it, chicken? Of course I have. Oh, here's his house. Okay, here goes the bell. Uh, when, when he starts making offers of money... Let me do the talking, chicken. All right, Al. Hello, Mr. Clyde. Look, Miss Peterson, you make my life a nightmare during working hours. I insist you allow me the evenings at home to recover. <laughs> well, Mr. Clyde, I thought maybe you have a job you could give my boyfriend, Al. Oh, him. <laughs> yes, you, you have never seen such a low-down character as Al And if you don't look out, he'll give you the business and you'll never forget him Hold it! <laughs> Chicken here is a, is a little confused she's, uh, she's not herself today Personally, I thought it was a pretty good description <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, my guests are waiting Good day You see, Chicken? This town just don't take to me. Well, Al, do me one last favor. Come back to the house and see if any of our friends have found anything for you. Coax me, chicken. Coax me. All right, Al. Here's a kiss. There. 
I'd like to see any of those Western cattle duplicate that. <laughs> She's not here, Al. Chicken, ain't that a note on the table? Oh, yes. Irma, honey, we'll be back soon. Have you discussed the agricultural possibilities with Al? If not, do so. Jane. What's this agricultural angle, Chicken? Well, Jane says that people are doing wonders with new scientific planting. They've grown lettuce that looks just like a flower and lots of things, and all you need is some seeds and some vigoro and some dirt and some imagination. Uh, you got to have a green thumb. Well, that uh, gold ring you gave me turned my finger green. Maybe you could wear it while you're planting. No, chicken, I'm not a farmer. Hey, how's about getting me a sandwich, huh? All right, Al. I'll see what's in the icebox. Find anything, chicken? Uh, yes, there's a couple of hard-boiled eggs, some tomatoes, some little green onions, and... Oh, I wonder what's in this box with the wax paper over it. Well, open it up. Oh, isn't it pretty? What a beautiful shade of green. Almost looks like a flower. Oh, Al, you're so naive. This is probably that new lettuce Jane was telling me about. <laughs> Wonder how it tastes. Put it in the sandwich, chicken. All right, Al. Uh, hand me that knife. I'll chop it up. No, no. You want to ruin it? Just cover it with mayonnaise. <laughs> All right, Al. I I'll slice the eggs on it. Now, uh, salt and pepper... Here you are, Al. Uh, thanks, chicken. How does it taste? Wonderful. <laughs> I'll bet you lettuce like this costs at least ten cents a head. Yes, easily. And now that I know you like it, I'll buy some and keep it in my hope chest. Oh, so you're back, Irma. Hello, tenderfoot. Where have you been, Jane? Uh, did you talk to Richard about Al's job? No, but I will. He'll be here any minute. You see, he left his prize green orchid in the icebox. He's going to take it to the flower show. <laughs> Orchid? Yes Gee, I'll be glad when I'm relieved of the responsibility Because it, it, it's practically priceless Oh, Al, you said it was only worth ten cents a head Quiet! <laughs> Wait a minute What's going on here? Al, what's on your mind? It's not on his mind, Jane. It's much lower. <laughs> Hold it, the two of you. Let me look in that icebox. Al, don't try to go down the laundry chute. They may not pick you up for a week. <laughs> oh, no. No, Richard's prize orchid. Where is it? What did you do with it? Irma. Oh, no, th this is too ridiculous. You, you didn't put it in a sandwich. I thought it was that new lettuce that you said looked like a flower. Oh, no. And Richard will be here any minute. What can I tell him? What can I do? Well, maybe... No, I don't think it would work. What? Well, I was thinking we could have Al X-rayed and enter the picture in the contest. <laughs> oh, you and your idiotic thoughts. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. Sorry? What will I tell Richard? Who is it? It's me, Richard. Oh, no. Come in. Why, Jane, what's wrong? You're crying. And Al, you're green. <laughs> what's wrong with you? The same thing that's wrong with both of them, Richard. Al ate your prize orchid. He... <laughs> that's rich. Al ate it. Richard, you're, you're laughing, aren't you angry? <laughs> Not at all, Jane. You see, my gardener sent the wrong orchid. I have the prize winner here in this box. And, Jane... I brought another one for you to wear when we go out tonight. Well, let me get out of here while I'm still in my right mind. And, Al, I haven't got a job for you, but let me remind you, if you leave this state, you may not be able to collect unemployment for three weeks. <laughs> what? In that case, I won't go west. I'm not going to jeopardize my annuity. <laughs> Come on, Al. Let you and I go out. You're wearing an orchid, too, even if it doesn't show. <laughs> Don't miss the sensational bargain introducing a wonderful new film-removing Pepsodent toothpaste. Right now, you can get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. You save 17 cents. Yes, two 25-cent tubes in a special twin pack. Regular price, 50 cents, 
only 33 cents. Penny for penny, ounce for ounce, new Pepsodent gives you more than any other leading toothpaste. More in results, too. For no other toothpaste can duplicate new Pepsodent's film-removing formula. It foams amazingly, goes to work faster removing film, making teeth brighter and breath cleaner. Hurry, this introductory offer is limited. Get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. Act today. Pepsodent toothpaste fights film on teeth and cleans breath too. Pepsodent toothpaste gives film on teeth the old skidoo. won first prize at the show, and he said that next year he'll enter another one and name it after me. Of course, he could marry me, and, and I'd have something to name after him. And uh, as far as Irma, Irma has got the horticulture bug, too. She has a little window box, and she's nursing a tenderling. Irma, what are you trying to grow? A flower, and I'm going to name it after Al. The owl flower. What kind of a flower is it? It's a flower that sleeps all day, except around noon. It opens its petals one hour for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if I were Luther Burbank, I'd never be able to plant anything in the mind of my friend Irma. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're very proud and pleased to present Miss Ann Daggett, Western editor of Radio Mirror Magazine, who has a message for Cy Howard, our producer-director. For the second consecutive year, Radio Mirror Magazine, representing its many readers, is honored to present you, Cy Howard, with an award as creator-producer-director of the listener's favorite radio program, My Friend Irma. Last year, its first year on the air, My Friend Irma won the favorite new comedy program award. This year, through your efforts and those of your wonderful cast and staff, my friend Irma has upheld its high standards. Radio Mirror Magazine congratulates you and your sponsor, Pepsodent Toothpaste. Thank you, Miss Daggett. I appreciate the award, but got a problem. <laughs> and when you got a problem, there is only one man who can help you. Who's Cy? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> got a problem. Got a citation. No, no, can't fix the cops. It's an award. Want to share it with people responsible for success of show. What do you suggest? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. We'll take it from there, and thank you, and goodbye, noble friend. What'd he say, Cy? Joe says, just be modest and say thank you and accept it on behalf of Marie Wilson, Joan Banks, John Brown, Hans Conried, Gloria Gordon, and Donald Woods, and Park Levy and his wonderful writing staff, our wonderful production staff, last but not least, our sponsor, Lever Brothers Company, the maker of Pepsodent, and Hal Wallace, who is currently filming My Friend Irma. And Cy, he should also have told you that the current issue of Radio Mirror Magazine contains a bylined article by you called The Blonde I Prefer. We'll go out and get it immediately. Good night and thank you, noble friend. And thank you and the Radio Mirror magazine from all of us on My Friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script as Danny Adams and Roland McLean and is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Arian. Another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma with Joe Banks as James. Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conrad was Professor Kropotkin and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Bluskin. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater followed by the Pepsi and Show My Friend Irma both brought to you by Lever Brothers Company. Wendell Niles speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.